Hello and welcome back to part 10 of this Hearts of Iron tutorial for complete beginners. I hope you're doing very well as you join us today. Let's fade the music of excitement out. Um, we carry on today on the 25th of March 1937. Uh, things are going pretty well and now that we've got almost everything out the way, it's just a case of speeding on through these pre-war stages, of course, there's still that conflict in Spain to get over and done with, but we're making progress nice and rapid. Please leave some comments for me on this video. If there's something that you're not clear on, you've got any questions, you need something going over again or saying it a different way, because, you know, I haven't got a crystal ball quite as big as I used to have. And I don't necessarily know exactly what things you may or may not be struggling with. So do leave a comment if there is anything that's unclear. Absent of that, let's crack on. Uh, so bring you into the game. I'll start my little timer. And coming into the game, of course, I need to pause the music. There we go. So I can put the game sounds on. Right. Oh, so... Before I unpause, and this is what I always do after coming into a gaming session from one day to the next, I always slow my time right down to the minimum green bar before unpausing. Um, sometimes when you load a game, you'll save a game one day, or even if you're playing on um, Iron Man mode, what will happen is you'll, you'll come out of a game one day, and then on another day you'll load back into that same game, or you'll continue the Iron Man game. And for the remaining 24 hours until the game ticks over into the next day, uh, so in this case I've only got an hour to go, but sometimes you may have more than an hour, um, what will happen is sometimes the game has a few things that are not quite right for that day. And so sometimes you'll have notifications saying like, you're really short on this and that and the other, and then the next day everything will write itself. It's like the game readjusts all its figures generally speaking um on midnight every night so that's that all right we have our first notification or, or doctrine up, up, up here to look at and if we hover over we see it's a land doctrine and again this is because if we look at our points to do with army navy and air experience our army has ticked over to 100 points now there are things that can reduce that but uh, let's focus on this for now so here we've got our three tabs, land, navy, air, that correspond to the points. You can see they're color coded and land has a variety of doctrines. I think we've touched on this before, uh, which include their mobile warfare doctrine, superior fire, grand battle plan and mass assault doctrine. Now, it may be tempting to think, OK, so we've already got this one unlocked. And as Germany, you start with the very first one unlocked. Most nations, I would say, I don't know if most is accurate, but on many nations that you play, the very first doctrine will be unlocked for you. And that's usually helpful because that gives you the clue of which one that country is uh, generally supposed to follow. Now, it may be tempting for us to activate this delay tactic. You can see it's going to cost us 100 experience points. That's there on the first line. And then once we enable that, it will give us uh, the following traits. Uh, and in this case, an extra 15 uh, points of organization. We've been over organization before, but a quick recap. Two equal divisions, one on one side, one on the other side. He who runs out of organization first will lose. So the more organization you have, the longer your troops can fight for. Remember, organization is sort of interchangeable with how tired troops are or you know the higher organization the more awake they are let's say it like that um so although it may be tempting to activate that we're not going to because there's something that we can get shortly that will enable us to get more land doctrines for the same 100 points so you don't want to waste 100 points basically paying full price for something when in a little while we'll be able to get some heavy discounts on some of these and we may be able to get two or even three things unlocked for those same hundred points so let's continue on with that we're going to press space to unpause at the slow time 
There's midnight, 25 ticking over to the 26th of March. Just before I ramp up to full speed, and again, I sometimes I record two or three episodes on the same day. This is a new day for me too. And so I'm just going to click on one of these just to catch up. So steel-wise, look at that. We're good. We're in the green. And again, as we've said before, when it comes to resources, they do not pile up. So you may see, oh, well, look at this. We're producing 21 pieces of excess aluminium or aluminium over and above what we require. Doesn't go onto a pile so that later on in the war, if we're short on aluminium, oh, well, we'll just pull it off that pile. It literally goes to waste into the ether. Just think of it as a computer pressing the delete button and whatever's on the page just gets deleted. Well, that's what's happening to the aluminium. Is it realistic or not? I, I don't know. I'm just saying it's the way the game deals with it. Um, of course, these negative shortages impact us directly, but we've been over the tungsten and the chromium issue. We only have a tiny income. Of course, we could trade, but if you're only one piece short to trade for a full eight, bearing in mind that means we're going to be wasting seven pieces is not necessarily the, the, you know, the most efficient way to play. So I think we're all pretty much caught up there. We can see exercises continue down there. And so let's have a little look how things are going over in Spain. So remember, if you've ever got more than um, one, uh, what we what, what they would call like a theatre of war, more than one theatre of war on the go, they appear on the right hand side. I go admit, and maybe it's just because I'm a little crazy and I don't like things. I, I don't necessarily arrange things hundred percent in order. Um, I usually just play with one theatre. Um, and I just move the map around to control units. Of course, if you've got millions of divisions, and especially if you've got a massive empire that spans lots of islands, you know, Japan would be a great uh, example of this. You know, or, you know, you're trying to expand to get all of these islands over here. You're trying to push down towards Australia, and you're also trying to push west across here to India. Then it may also be worth considering uh, creating like an eastern theatre and a western theatre just to, to help in that regard. Again, that's entirely up to you. There are no inherent advantages or disadvantages to choosing to play like that. It's more just a, an, an, an organisation indexing system that's designed to help or, uh, or not you. I find that having to switch back and forward uh, like this a, more of a hindrance than a help. I just find it quicker to just move the uh, m the map round and do what I need to do. Okay, so that said, uh, Rommel, he's got his flashing green uh, uh, blue cross there, basically saying, you know, there's some sort of trait. Now, that may just be that guerrilla tactic. And again, we're not interested in assigning Rommel a guerrilla tactic, seen as he's a panzer guy. That's more for infantry. We've been over that. And besides, if we look up there at command power, we've only got 12. You see, that's the one next to the phone. And as you may recall, we require 15 command power to assign traits to uh, any any general or admiral. Okay, time continues to tick forward. And so what we're going to do is increase the rate of play. And by now, I'm sure you've started to get the gist of how things happen in a pre-war setting. It's a case of waiting for a notification, hitting space, dealing with the notification uh, so that we're not being inefficient with our time, but also so we're not sat here for like weeks and weeks waiting for things to happen. As you see, on the minimum speed there, an hour of supposed real time is taking us several seconds, uh, you know, to, to go pl or play through per hour of what was a real time. So let's increase the rate of play, and there's the little pause there as we tick round to the first of the following month. Now you can see over here in Spain we've got a few red circles. Now again, because we're not trying to win the war, I've just paused it there, just because we're not trying to win the war doesn't really matter, you know, how well per se this engage is going. The end of the day, nationalist Spain, so that's the darker colour, is going to win anyway. We're just trying to help them out to get in their good books and keep it going for as long as possible so that uh, our guy gets experience and um, we know he already has. So let's continue on. Obviously, if this was a real war, 
uh, I, I say real war, but our real war, we would be trying to uh, finish it as quickly as possible and, and play a little bit more clever than just create one front line with one arrow and leave them to it. So we have now broken through the 15 command power. You see there we've got 17. It's just ticked on to 18. So what I'm going to do is pause. And again, I always pause when I'm trying to make some sort of decision. Again, whether I'm casting here for a tutorial or not. Because you don't want all of these things happening in the background while you're lost in some menu trying to do something. The only exception to that is if, if, if I'm playing on the minimum speed, which again, I don't usually play on a slow speed unless I'm microing in some sort of a battle. So let's have a look what's available to Rommel just as a recap. He's got the Panzer Leader trait. He's now got the Panzer Expert. We gave him that. And the only other option available to him is the Guerrilla Fighter. And again, we're not going to give him that. Now, at some stage, some of these other ones will unlock. And if you're ever curious, well, how long is that going to take? Just hover the mouse over the various ones. So, for example, Infantry Leader, he's zero out of a thousand. And that's because he's got no infantry under him whatsoever. He's entirely a Panzer guy. Now, if we were to assign him, oh, well, he has some Panzers, but he has some infantry as well. Of course, he would start, and again, using the term that a lot of people like to use, he would start grinding away at those uh, thousand points. And at some point, you would be able to tell Rommel, OK, you're a Panzer expert and you're an expert with infantry. And again, at some point, that would unlock. Uh, so we can have a little look. Engineer, you can see he's got 108 out of 700. You can see, so he's definitely working towards that. And once he does, you can see there the various bonuses that will unlock uh, River as well as a Fort Attack plus 5 and 10% uh, respectively. Again, if you're having to cross a river as part of your attacking, that's obviously somewhat different than just going across, you know, across a road or across a field. Now, there's a little bit more to it. And so, you know, there's uh, separate things there. As well as course up here, organizer. Um, now, this is uh, what a lot of people would argue are, are the better traits across here. Um, and you can see here, these are often what you'll see with a field marshal. But again, there's nothing preventing us getting them. And this one here, of course, Desert Fox. I may say, well, hang on, isn't Rommel, Rommel the Desert Fox? Well, he was. But you can see in order to unlock a trait like this, if you take a look at the terrain he needs to be fighting on, he needs to fight on desert. And he needs to fight on desert, uh, again, uh, to the tune of 700 experience points. So if you were to look across here, he's already got some experience fighting on hills, none yet in the swamps. Mountains is uh, over 200. Urban, so that's uh, city and built-up areas. Um, ranger, jungle rat, not been there yet, winter specialist. So you can see that's what those are about and you will eventually get them. Um, how many you can then enable for Rommel or any other given general? Again, depends on how many traits he's unlocked here. And again, at the moment, we've only got one additional trait that uh, to assign him to. And again, that's nothing to do with how many traits are available on here. That's just how many we can assign to him in total. The higher his level gets here, he's currently at a level 4. Looks like he's 83% on the way to a level 5. Once he gets there, uh, you will then be able to assign a, another trait and another and another, depending on how high of a level he gets. Uh, so let's unpause. And let's now wait for the first notification. I may also be tempted uh, to redline it. Pause. Okay, so we get that notification there. And once you play this game, you'll begin to realize different notifications have different sounds. And that particular sound says we've got some troops that have basically finished training. And they, as soon as they finish training, they appear on the field as a new figurine. And of course, they're not yet assigned to any general. Uh, so what I'm going to do is get over to Germany. Uh, deselect all the generals, come over here to the uh, unassigned division. And again, is there just one or is there more than one? We'll press shift and click to find out. In this case, there's only one division. And we're going to assign him uh, to where we want. 
Now, remember, I was saying I, I like to give my generals even numbers of divisions where possible. Uh, I'm not sure if there's necessarily a, a major tactical advantage to that. It's certainly never the best to leave a general with just one division. You can see the generals are all capable of commanding up to 24 divisions effectively. The only time that varies, uh, so you may say, well, what about this Paulus guy? He says one of 72. And that's if you are guarding an area as opposed to drawing a front line. And again, if we take a look at Paulus, we'd use this option here, area defense. You can see he's, oh, it's actually quite difficult to see, but uh, if I press it, there we go. That's going to show up a little bit better. He's guarding that area. So if you use that order, you can have up to 72 troops if you're just using the generals to draw a front line. Uh, they, for some reason, they can only command up to 24 divisions. Now, there are some unlocks you can get later in the game if you use your generals effectively, and they can command up to 30 divisions, which is absolutely something you want to make use of, because if your top general can command 30 divisions and he's giving all these bonuses to all of those divisions, that's obviously hugely helpful. Now, you may say, well, can you give them more than 24 divisions? Yes, you can. There is no... There is no game mechanic that prevents you from assigning more divisions to these generals. The problem is, if you do assign more divisions to the generals, those bonuses, those traits, um, get very much watered down. I wouldn't say they're completely wiped out, but it's very inefficient to give generals more divisions than they're comfortable with. So unless it's an absolute emergency, and I, I, I'm struggling to think of an example, at least for Germany, because they've got loads of generals, make sure you give them up to the maximum amount, but no more. And in this case, that's 24. So let's just come away from that. Let's click on this one unassigned division that's uh, been made or passed out of training. And let's give it to Bok here. We see he's on nine divisions. Let's right click on to Bok. That's going to ascend the division over there. And so when we unpause, we see that division whizzing on over there. And again, that's because we're playing at max speed. All right, pause. May 1937, the Hindenburg disaster. There she goes. Of course, there's a, a, uh, a discussion to be had. Was this the actual hydrogen within the airship that blew or was this the cover or the covering of the airship that blew and again there's two different sides to that uh, if you hadn't heard that there were two different sides now you have all oh, the humanity and we've also completed the Reich's Autobahn and remember this was one of the national focuses okay what was the Reich's Autobahn you say and again different countries will have different focuses so they're not necessarily all going to have one like this Although Germany always will, I say always will because of the the national focuses being specific to the nations. If we come across to the construction menu and select the infrastructure tab, if you remember, all of the all of Germany was either four out of five on the road networks, apart from some of them like this that were a three out of five. Now, we went ahead and upgraded Moorsland to a 5 out of 5 earlier on. But now, look, we've got a large swath of uh, central areas of Germany that have all been upgraded to a 5 out of 5. I think we upgraded Saxon as well, but certainly the other regions there have been upgraded. You can see on the, uh, on the eastern side, we also have some areas queued up. That's what we've done. Nothing to do with this national focus. But of course, now that that national focus is complete, before we unpause, we need to continue. So let's come over to, we need to basically set up a new national focus. Again, there's never a reason not to set up national focus going um, with, again, a couple of, one minor exception for a sort of an advanced play, which maybe we'll look at at some point. So again, the quick reminder, we've sort of got our more industrial stuff over to the left-hand side. And I think gener generally speaking, that's the case for all nations and their focus trees. You've got your sort of military stuff in the central area. And towards the right hand side, we've got our uh, plan of actions when it comes to attack, attacking and so forth. Now, for some reason, the German focus tree on the extreme right hand side has the navy stuff. 
as opposed to grouping navy together with the air and the army. Why that is, at first I would have said, oh, I don't know. But if we take a look at the focus tree, it starts to make sense. There are some parts on the focus tree here that are dependent upon the army. There are some parts over here dependent upon the navy. So the only way to make that work was to put army and navy either side of their respective focus tree there. Now, one of the things that uh, happened historically and will be very helpful to you playing as Germany is what they call the Anschluss. And what this is, after you've done the Rhineland, is where Germany and Austria uh, combine together, uh, be become as one. Um, Austrians are, are pretty happy in doing this. Um, the main reason, I'm sure somebody's going to shoot me down over this, but I think the main reason is World War I, if you, if you recall, uh, somebody uh, nationwide, much bigger than Austria, b uh, declared war and started fighting against Austria. Austria being allied with Germany. Germany then came in and, and tried to assist Austria and the whole thing sort of escalated from that point onwards. And so because there are a lot of Austrians that remember that, um, they're not too unhappy with the idea of becoming allied with Germany. And I, and I think if, if you go even further back, they may once upon a time have been um, one and the same ways back when, although, again, my history gets a little bit fuzzy ways back then. Either way, that explains why they're not too disgruntled with the fact. Now, you can see here that in order to get this, uh, we need to be independent. Austria needs to be independent. All of that's okay. There needs to be at least 500,000 manpower in the divisions in the field. So, again, not 500 manpower, some on the field, some in training. They need to all be in the field. We also need more than 40,000 infantry equipment in the army. And, again, this... This was a more recent addition to the requirement to prevent players from basically gaming the system by recruiting divisions that didn't have any equipment whatsoever just to get round this. Now you may say, well what benefit is there from this Anschluss? And the answer is, aside from this 10 experience down here, that country basically is treated as though it's now part of Germany. So you get more people, more factories, both civilian, military... Uh, the resources that Austria sits on, although I don't think it's many, but uh, you get that area. So there is basically no reason not to get this. But as you see, we don't yet have the people or the uh, equipment to do so. Absent of that, I always like to get this one, the Navy rearmament. As you see, it's 35 days, so it's twice as quick as some of the others. It gives us additional Navy slots and Germany being a, a short on Navy. Again, you have to think outside the box a bit. In other words, U-boats. Uh, having a few extra naval yards to produce more U-boats is, of course, a good thing. This gives us, as you see, if you top all of that up, an additional three yards. Uh, so let's get it. There will, of course, be many players um, you'll see in their tutorials or their playthroughs. They completely neglect this side of things. They're basically trying to... Uh, rushed the whole thing when it comes to Poland as quickly as possible, which is a legitimate way to play. But, you know, being a tutorial and all, I'm just trying to show you a bit more of the game than the bare minimum. So let's go ahead and get that one done. Okay, again, 35 days. Let's have a little look. Modify Officer Core. And we've got over 100 political power. So that's, again, over there. Modify Officer Core. Navy command. So this is something that we've not yet got. Chief of the Navy. We've got Chief of the Army. Um, he gives us, if you recall, uh, as well as the Army experience, which all the commanders do, this particular one gives our divisions an extra 10% attack. Uh, Goering, aside from the experience daily, gives us an extra 10% air superiority. So when it comes to Navy command, We've got a choice between two guys. Most of the others, I believe, have three. Navy, just two. Um, the choice between Reader and Dönitz. Now, Dönitz, as you see, requires 200 political power. Uh, Eric Reader here requires 100 political power, but in exchange, uh, 20 command powers opposed to 10. Now, you may think that's more or less an even trade-off. One's more of this, one's more of that. I don't know. 
But even if they cost exactly the same, in my opinion, I would always go for Eric Raider. And the reason is, if you take a look at those bonuses, they're more of an all-round bonus, capital, ship. Again, they're, the, they're your big ships, your battleships, your, your heavy cruisers and so forth. More attack, more armor, basically more defense. Uh, screen attack, screen defense. Now, screens, again, are your destroyers, so they're, best, they're better at defending and attacking. In other words, this is very much a surface fleet sort of bonus. Now, we're short on surface ships, remember. Donuts, if we take a look. Naval experience daily is plus 0.4 instead of plus 0.3. So that's already a big bonus. Convoy raiding efficiency plus 20%. In other words, this is all submarines and only submarines. Not a bad thing if you're going all out subs and that's it. But being a little bit cheaper and the fact that we get more all-round bonuses, we're going to go with this guy. And remember, you can always change these generals. They're not like traits that once you've got them locked in, that's it. So for now, let's go for this guy. Okay, and now we've got an advisor at least for all of the three forces, which is it's going to really help us get these uh, experience points up. Just before we unpause now, remember we had a bunch of stuff training from episodes before. It's worth finishing that off, and I'm going to finish uh, my coffee off. There we go. If we come over to the F2 menu, we'll have a little look Navy-wise. We had this new flotilla with Dunnitz training the subs, and you can see they're pretty much all silver. There's a couple of submarines, the final two, the submarine number 9 and 10 there that are almost there. So that's close enough for me, so I'm going to cancel their training. You can see we're down to just 341 days of fuel left. Now, if I was to unpause the game now, you would see how many days of fuel is left would increase into the years again, because what we've basically done is set 10 subs that were out at sea patrolling to come back. You have to wait a day or two for them to come back, obviously, but once they're back they will no longer use fuel. And as we've said before, but worth a quick recap, if you then leave them sat in harbour, they do not lose experience over time. Excuse me. So don't think, oh, if we don't keep them training every few months, the crew's going to get rusty. Uh, maybe something like that will come to this game at some point in the future, but for now, they, they don't go quite that far. Uh, so that's that one. Um, ships uh, ready to go. We've also got four submarines that are not yet assigned to any flotilla because, again, we've only got three flotillas all set for ten submarines. So let's go ahead and create our new fourth flotilla. So, again, to do that, we're going to click on the right there. You can see it's completely separated from the other commanders. With the four subs selected, we're going to right-click onto Carl Dönitz, our submarine guy. There we go. And that creates the new flotilla. And again, if we was to leave it as this, it, the new flotilla would only be the four submarines and that would be it. But again, we want to increase the strength up to 10 or at least 10. So what I'm going to do, once again, automatic reinforcement, turn that on. Automatic split off, turn that on. Uh, we'll leave repair priority on high and engagement at medium risk. All of that's okay for now. We're going to open the composition editor just like before and we're going to up this to 10. Now you can make use of the shift or the control click just to instead of having to click five times we can just click once. So control click that gets us to nine and then just click one to finish off as 10. Okay and of course as new subs finish they're now going to fulfill that flotilla. Perfect that's it for navy let's go f3 to the air force quick click over here. We've got two air wings training. You can see they're both uh, vetted up as far as it goes for air wings. So we'll select this one. We'll cancel the training, uh, this fighter wing. Uh, I'm going to fly this one over to Western Germany, perhaps over here. And this is a tactical bomber. We'll cancel the training for those. And once again, get them up near the border with Poland, uh, perhaps over here to Königsberg as well. All right, next thing then, we've still got this flashing icon here to add a new air wing. We may as well have a look what we've got there. And if you take a look at fighters, we've got just over 100 fighters uh, ready to go. Now, one thing that we haven't addressed yet, but it's worth, uh, this is a perfect time to mention it. 
There's several, there, you know, the, the different categories of aircraft. Uh, let, let's just come over here to our uh, research page uh, so we can have a quick look. So we've got the different categories of aircraft. We've got close air support uh, for, you know, we're just talking about the small aircraft here. Close air support, we've got fighters, and then we've got Navy bombers, all right? So those are three different categories of small aircraft. When you produce newer aircraft, so let's just assume that we unlock this one here, the Fokker Wolf 190. We start producing Fokker Wolf 190 fighters. What will happen is uh, other fighter squadrons that are equipped with the what would then be the older fighter, the Messerschmitt 109, as and when there are enough new aircraft coming out the factory, they will gradually replace the older fighters that exist in the existing air wings. So if we were to keep producing Fokker Wolf 190s all day, at some point all of our fighter wings that were previously equipped with this aircraft would now be equipped with Fokker Wolf 190s. Therefore, when we go to the airbase and say, oh, we want to train new pilots, what you'll see in this airbase is the older aircraft are available. And the reason the older aircraft are available is because any new aircraft, the priority is to replace existing aircraft first, uh, rather than just have them sat there waiting around for you to decide we're going to create a new air wing. Obviously, if you've got loads of spare new aircraft, then you're going to see the new aircraft sat there as well. And so... You may have been wondering, well, hang on a minute, why if we're producing the Messerschmitt 109, which is clearly, if we take a look once again on this menu, a better aircraft than this old interwar thing, this Heinkel 51. If we're producing this, why can't we recruit the Messerschmitt 109? It's the exact same reason, okay? Because as we produce more 109s, they're going... Oh, what have we just done there? So, so here's why you need to uh, press escape. As we're producing more 109s, older squadrons are being equipped with those 109s and they are giving up their old HE-51s. So we will only be able to recruit new fighter squadrons as HE-51s Unless we literally let this fill up to hundreds and hundreds of old aircraft. And I'm just going to say that as Germany, again, being somewhat short on aircraft, you need to make use of all the aircraft, including the really old ones, until you are several years in the game. Once you're several years into the game, any older aircraft that may still be around, you may choose to uh, give away to an ally such as Italy or whatever. Absent of that right now, again, we're over 100, so we'll recruit that wing. And for the same reason that these are not over 100, there is no point recruiting them yet. Okay, let's hit escape. Select the airbase and um, we'll look for somebody else to train. These two bomber wings that both have a 100 aircraft, we'll select. Let's select them both. And again, I'm going to use shift to do that. And we'll start the training off there. Okay, let's unpause. Check that nothing there is happening that shouldn't. Press escape to deselect. That looks good. And again, if you're wondering, well, why is there a red exclamation mark next to some of these? It's exactly the same reason as there's always an exclamation mark next to stuff, whether it's Navy, Army or Air Force. That is, you've got a group of guys, you've got a group of soldiers, you've got a group of ships, you've got a group of aircraft. They're sat there, they're ready to go, but they're not doing anything. And... That's it. And of course, we don't really care that they're not doing anything at this moment in time. But when there's a war on, again, you don't want to have fighter wings and bombers sat there doing nothing when they could be more helpful either at the front line attacking or somewhere else defending. So that's that. Uh, so let's escape. Let's slow down because we've got once again more unassigned divisions. We can see it's just the one because they always pop up in this area. And again, I'm just looking for a general to assign them to. Let's go for Paulus there. He's just got the one division. So right click onto Paulus. Sort it. Okay, unpause. Speed up. Pause. Research finish. Dispersed industry. Remember, this was one of the research things. And we'll take a look on detail. 
that allows all of these things to take place. Maximum amount of factories in the state plus 20%. Remember those restrictions? Well, they're all going to be a little bit higher now. Production efficiency stuff, factory output stuff. Again, everything here is good. There is no, there are no negative modifiers here. All of these are green, you know, if we were to view it as a color. We've also finished research oil processing. Now you may say, well, hang on, isn't it a bit of a coincidence that all these research things happen to, they seem to finish on the same day. And the answer is because two of them have finished on the same day or three or four have finished on the same day. Oftentimes when you research things, you'll notice that they take the same number of days. There are some research things that are a little bit quicker, some that are longer, but many of them take the same number of days. That's all there is to it. Nothing magical about it. Okay. So we've got that oil thing done there. Again, we don't yet have any refineries, but we will be looking at that soon. Engineering. Let's have a little look. Uh, the research here is still 0 0.6 years ahead, so we're not going to go there. Aircraft, these are way ahead. We've looked at that. Navy, same thing there. Artillery, these are all on the go. We can already see here the next rung is not until 1939, so this is way ahead. Armour is way ahead as well. If we take a look at support companies, the 1939 lot is way ahead, but remember we were saying we were hoping to be able to unlock some of these come over to the infantry equipment these are 1938 so also somewhat ahead now because we're playing on easy or civilian mode our research speed is somewhat quicker than it would be otherwise so if you're playing on normal difficulty you probably wouldn't be at this stage just yet but again that's great because you know we're learning how to play it's best to be somewhat bit ahead than it is behind so if we come across to the industry tab, really the only way that we can go that is not yet ahead of time is this rubber uh, processing. So that's 99 days. So let's get that one on the boil. And then we'll make use of this one here. And we're going to have to pick one of these here from the support companies. Now, MPs, remember if we're going to attack countries you'll want to make use of the mps we'll take a look at that in a future episode but let's get it unlocked it's uh, why not because we need something to be on the go pointless wasting our research okay now one of the things we've not yet looked at at all in the series is modifying divisions or modifying division templates so this is the perfect opportunity to do just that so if you recall one of the things that we'd unlocked in the research category, let's just have a little look under the support companies after we'd gotten the radio. That was one of the very first things we did is the support company right here. And again, the um, support company, all of these uh, are support companies, but this particular one here, the signal company is basically allows better communication initiative and coordination between whichever division you assign it to. Now think of this as if your division is very good at attack, such as tanks are, this is going to enable the division to function even better. It's not so helpful when it comes to defensive divisions. I'm not saying it's useless, but you're better off picking other divisions for defense, like field hospital, for example. Because we've got this one unlocked and we also have panzers, let's see if we can assign our signal company to our panzer division. And that's the change we're going to make. So let's press escape to come out of this. We're going to come over to our recruitment menu. And not only is this the page where you recruit new divisions into your army overall it's also the page where you adjust or you design your divisions as well so whether you adjust them or create new ones so if we take a look at our existing panzer division here on the right hand side we're going to hit the edit button and bearing in mind we already have panzer divisions on the field of which three of them are in spain uh, currently in battle so if we make a change here, as soon as we press save, because we've made the change, what's going to happen is 
the divisions that are fighting in Spain are suddenly going to say, all right, hang on, we've got this new organisational chart that's come through. We now require this, this and this that we didn't before. Therefore, we're now really short on equipment, whereas before we weren't. And so if you're making big changes, be careful, especially if you're in battle. Take a look on the left-hand side here. We've got the support companies. So far, we've got Lorry as acting as like as a scout. We've got an engineer company and we've got support artillery. We're now going to add a new one here and we're going to select the signal company there on the right-hand side. So let's put that in. You can see that in order to make this change, it's going to cost us 10 army experience. So remember, that's, that's of these stars here. So this is a perfect example of one of the reasons why it's important to get military experience for various reasons, one of which is if you wish to modify templates, it costs experience. So let's go ahead and select that one. Now, before we press OK or save as it were, and you can see that it's going to cost us 10, uh, that, you know, that's just going to confirm that it's going to cost the 10. You can see looking at the chart on the right, all of these figures, the changes that we've just made, whether it's one change or whether it's 10 changes, you can see the difference it's going to have. So hit points have increased slightly. If you want to know how much, just hover over the individual one. In this case, hit points have increased by one hit point. OK, so not really a big difference. Take a look at organization. That's taken a bit of a dive, only a tad 0.2. Uh, recovery rate, well, it's negligible. They claim it's up, but it's 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 nothing at all. Now, obviously, things like weight and supply use, they have increased because there's just more stuff to move around. So it's going to weigh more, which is something that only matters if you're talking about moving things around on ships. But it's, uh, you see there, slight increase. Supply use, that's obviously gone up a bit. You know, you've got more people doing whatever it is, it's going to increase the amount of stuff that's used. Average reliability has taken a small tumble. And again, that's because we've got more people doing more stuff. And these people have got radio equipment, amongst other things. Every once in a while, those things are going to break down. Um, initiative, we see that's gotten a big plus, gone from 0 to 10%. Some of the other things are slightly reduced. Now you may say, well, hang on, piercing's down by almost a full point, uh, armor's down. These are all bad things. Why is that? And again, the answer is because you've got the same division in the same area, wherever it is, but no longer is that division made up of, let's just say, 50% tanks and 25% lorries and all of this other stuff. It's now slightly less percentage made up of tanks because, of course, you've got extra people in the signal company. And that's behind these averaged out stats, if you like, on armor. Clearly, people sat in a tent or whatever it is on their headphones doing radio stuff are not sat behind thick armor in a tank. They're two separate things. Breakthrough increases slightly, and again, that's more down to how effective the communication is as opposed to anything else there. So again, swings and roundabouts, which is why it's really important to assign these sort of support companies to the uh, respective battalion, uh, the, the respective divisions that can make the best use of them. Obviously, manpower, that increases, and in this case, by 500, because, again, you need extra people. Now, a organization of 22 is very low. Now, as the game evolves, newer technologies and so on, this will increase, but that is a low number. But for now, we're going to save. Just before we do, just hover the mouse over the save button. What I want you to notice here is what's going to happen. This template change will impact four divisions. What that means is we have four Panzer divisions somewhere, and three of them are in Spain. We've got one at home in Germany. Saving this is going to impact four of them. This is an easy way for you to quickly see how many divisions you've even got. Uh, so if we press save, that's what's going to happen. Now, because if you take a look at this, we're going to 
we require an extra 500 manpower to make this change. If we press save, that's going to cost us 2,000 manpower in total. Why? Because 500 manpower times 4 divisions equals 2,000. The only reason I'm highlighting this is so that you can see before making a change, don't just put, oh, I've got enough points, let's press save and hope for the best. Here you will be able to see that you've got enough stuff. Have we got enough manpower? Well, we require 2,000. We've got a million available. Good. Have we got enough trucks? Well, we require an additional 40 trucks to fulfill this. We've got 2,000 available. All good. Have we got enough support equipment? Well, we require 80 to do this. We happen to have 377. All good. So with all of that said and done, that seems like a positive change overall. Let's press save. Okay. And we're done. And again, there's something to be said about making a change when tanks are on the front or any division is on the front line fighting. There are other ways around that. We'll perhaps take a look at that in, in a bit. But because I'm very happy with how things are going here in Spain, um, you know, that's good overall. In fact, if we take a look at the tanks in Spain, here we can see we've actually got a division up to level 5. Um, so he's got like this skull with this... The laurels around the skull there, <laughs> almost uh, drew a blank on that word. You can see that gives 75% modifying bonus. So, and again, these here are level 4. So everything's progressed from level 3 to 4 to, and some of them to 5. Now, because we've made changes now to these divisions, and again, the changes, we've added a sing uh, signal company. When we unpause, if we come over to the equipment uh, uh, graph, you remember the red of the two, the green one is how organized they are or how, again, how awake the division is. Um, as opposed to being tired, the red graph is how much equipment they have. Now, because we've said, right, well, signal company, and again, we've just seen that requires this many more trucks, this much more manpower, this much more support equipment, they're going to be even shorter on equipment until those new things arrive. So when we unpause, again, there's going to be a slight uh, drop there. So let's slow time down to, say, three bars. Just watch these red bars where the tanks are as I unpause. And you can see there's some of them dipping slightly. And if we hover the mouse over, you can see we're at 80%. This one's down to 62. This one's 77. So you can see these are quite low figures. And it's going to take a little while uh, for that new equipment to arrive. And again, if you hover over, you can get a real breakdown on. He's waiting for 47 tanks, 10 trucks, 20 pieces of support equipment. Uh, and if you wait long enough, you'll you'll see those things get delivered. Okay. All right, we've been over that. Improved machine tools. Okay, so that's on the research slot. Let's have a look on that. That was over here. That's improved our efficiency cap by 10%. So what's going to happen now is tank uh, factories that are producing tanks, they're getting good at it. This doesn't instantly give them an extra 10%. What it does is it allows there to be a bigger headroom of 10% for the factories now to move into. So that's uh, that's great there. Now, because we are pretty much caught up on everything that I can think of that is useful here, uh, or with the exception maybe of field hospitals, so we get that. But when the next piece of research completes... We're going to be penalized on something because we're ahead, we're going to be ahead on everything. So it makes sense if you're going to be penalized on everything to pick the thing that is going to be most beneficial to you. So let's just set the field hospital going. And that most useful thing, without any shadow of a doubt, if we come over to the engineering panel, is going to be the computing machine. Because once we get it, it's going to increase the research speed of everything else by 5%. Yes, we're going to be penalised on it, but we're going to be penalised whatever we select, so we may as well go for something like that. Okay. Just before we let go, we've got the unassigned division. If we zoom in here, infantry division. So let's press escape. Because you see we've still got the Spanish window selected. Let's come over to the German one. And we'll assign the division over to... Uh, let's go for... 
Again, I, I ideally wanted 10 divisions with this um, general here. This is the general who is between Germany and France on the so-called Maginot line, although the Maginot line is on the on the French side of the border. But uh, regardless, our side of the border. So we'll right click. OK, that'll give nine divisions. Let's unpause. We'll wait for the 10th division to appear, which hopefully won't be long. I'm just going to pause it there. Whether it, that sound happens to you or not, you will have heard that shh sound. And together with it appeared this icon here, very low on supply. Now you can just left click on it to immediately be taken to the area in question. But if we take a look here, the Panzer here has got extreme difficulties. But if we zoom in, we've got this arrow backwards in black. And what that means, that black arrow means that the general or whoever has given the order not so much to move from here to there, but to retreat from here to there. And so basically the general is doing what he needs to do to take care of that division. So let's unpause. There we see the, gen the, the panzer go back and now we see the supply issues have gone from red back to yellow. And Rommel is getting moving the tank to get stuck in once again. Okay. Back. Let's deselect everything there. Go back to the Germany. Press F1 to get the default view. We've got a division ready again. And this is going to be the last division that we're going to send to this guy for the entire build-up of war you know once there are 10 divisions there so with it selected right click on this guy and again he's the one we set up for the border here so if we unpause you see him moving it into place and of course he's training these guys which is exactly what we want so that they'll all be silver so once you're at that stage let's pause again spacebar pauses one of the good things is even if you've got menus on the screen such as now our uh, naval re rearmament uh, ta focus task there on the tree is completed, which is great. So we're going to move towards the left hand side and we're now going to go for this option here. If you take a look at that, Gross Raum Wirtschaft, <laughs> I'm guessing at this point, 70 days. But look at the bonuses infrastructure plus 10, railway plus 10. And again, we need to be building roads and railways throughout the game. So to have everything go 10 year, 10% uh, quicker, absolutely. Okay, so we're almost done here. And uh, we'll just finish off these icons. We've got three dockyards available. Why do we have three dockyards available? Well, of course, our uh, naval um, focus tree just completed the 35 day shorter water. We ended up with three additional dockyards. It uh, looks like one of those have already been put to use. We see that we've now got 13 in total instead of the previous 10 and so i'm looking to increase the production now we know we were waiting on destroyers and we're somewhat short there so what i'm going to do is put both of these additional factories onto destroyer production there we go we did get that little notification there to tell us that we're short on steel uh, we will deal with that next episode we can see we're in seven in the negative so that's a great place to end this one. I hope you found it useful. And remember to leave any questions that you may have in the comments. We're going to save and hopefully ramp things up now in episode 11. I think I have gone super slow long enough so that everybody gets a good idea of where we're going. Make sure your game is on or around the 10th of June. So, you know, in the middle of June, somewhere 1937 is great. You know, if, if you're in very early July, you'll be OK. OK, if you're in December 1937, <laughs> I hate to say it, man, but you'll probably need to be starting again. All right, let's press escape. Let's save the game as part 10 and I'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye bye. <laughs> it wasn't very sleek, that was it.